I'm making this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, laws of the State of New Jersey. The Planning Board Secretary is prepared to schedule the meetings of the Planning Board of the Borough of Kenworth for the year 2023. This posted a true copy of the schedule in the bulletin board located at the front entrance of the Borough Hall. This mailed true copies of the schedule to the local source, the Star Ledger, and maintains a copy of the schedule in Borough Hall. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied in regards to this meeting. Roll call. Mayor Kovic? Here. Mr. David? Here. Mr. Clemente? Here. Mr. Cantina? Here. Mazio? Here. Mr. Ladowdy? Here. Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Morrow? Here. And that's it. Everybody else. All right. We have a quorum to proceed. Obviously, this is our work session. I didn't have any. It could end up being a quick work session, even though we, we plan to have our work sessions because so many of the times we don't have enough time in a half hour to, to get through what we want to talk about. But that's usually when our chairman is here. Um, so. <laughs> Are you saying? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just stating facts. Um, but, I, the, but the one thing, I'm seeing Mr. Mr. O'Brien <laughs> scramble to get set up there. But I think the, the first thing I wanted to just get an update on is the, the master plan. And, and numbers are in. Oh, the, we're getting numbers. OK. We're processing them. Um, my work schedule is not what it should be. But uh, I've got numbers in and going through the master plan and updating things. Do you have an estimate of when? I could have you with um, the yeah. I could have my updated numbers to you, I believe, for next month. Oh, okay, great. Depending on my work schedule, which is you can see. Okay. So if, yeah, no, if, I appreciate if I can, it. I can, I'll get them to you by next month. Okay. That would be great. If not, I'll let you know that. Um, a little color around what's meant by the numbers. Oh, yeah. Demographics yes. from the census. Yeah, you're familiar with the master plan. Mm -hmm. And that gives the uh, large number of statistics concerning the borough, uh, population, population density, the housing we have. Uh, number of people per household, number of people per dwelling unit. Um, from when we last did the master plan in 2011, the 2010 census numbers were not out. So we decided at that point to go forward uh, with the 2,000 numbers. Um, this Kenilworth, although a dynamic town, is not changing uh, exponentially in a short period of time, like 10 years, was our thought at that time. Um, so, in anticipation of this master plan, we wanted to update all the numbers and include both the 2010 and the 2020 numbers. Tw yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, the 2020 numbers were not available until early 2022. <coughs> and then the local numbers were not available because they concentrated all the resources on doing congressional districts and legislative districts. So they finally got to the municipal data later. And now that that is finally available, uh, I can use that to update the master plan uh, and use the basis for discussions. All right, great. So it sounds like it was better to wait because the 10 year mark was 2021. Yeah, I mean, we purposely waited yeah. for the census data because it's so, what we have now is so old that we really need the new yeah. stuff. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. catching me up. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's, and Kevin just gave you a fantastic. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. No. A fantastic update on that. In last year, in May of 2022, we did update the master plan with what's called the reexamination, meaning that we are current under state law. Uh, we're not behind. And our reexamination found, with a few exceptions, that the goals that we enunciated back in 2011 were still valid and were to be carried forward until our next examination of the master plan. Which is now. Which is now. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and just to give you a little more information, Billy, that we had, um, I guess, what, two, two, three years ago that we started the, yeah. the committee? Yeah. 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 Because so you were pressing it to say, hey, right. we got to start getting things right. together. So we got a whole list of things to work on. Yeah. So we formed, just to give, I don't know if you know this or not, but we, we the board formed a subcommittee. The you know master plan subcommittee to work on less than a quorum, you know, of the members. 
um, to work on it. So I was the chair of the committee, and Mr. Mazio was on it. I think Mr. Ligotti was on it. Uh, Mr. Pantina, you were on it, right, Nick? Yep. yep. And um, I think Mr. Scuderi, that was the... Uh, I think Mr. Grimaldi. And Rob. Mr. Oh, Rob Grimaldi. Rob yes, Rob Mr. Grimaldi was on it. So anyway, we spent uh, a, a year plus going on, you know, and in, in, in working also with the uh, Mr. O'Brien um, to update the master plan from, you know, from our perspective, those things outside of the census information. So we actually finished that, what, more than a year ago? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and then we presented it to the full board and we asked for feedback and input from the full board from what the committee had done. Um, and I don't believe that there were any recommendations or changes um, from, the, from the full board over what the committee had put together. So that's, um, yeah, so that's where we're, we're at. Could I ask, I'm curious, in 2011 when you basically jumped the gun and um, you didn't have the numbers, were you that far off when the numbers finally did come in? Anticipating what, okay, all right. All right. That's it. But you didn't want to do it again, obviously. You know. the, the demographics have changed in, um, in ethnicity yeah. in the borough okay. a bit. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, enough to say, enough to you look at the numbers and say, wow, that's, that's a change. Right, right. Okay. And then remind me, Kevin, did we say, were we going to have a committee member, a committee meeting before, you know, after you're done with what you're doing? And then we should. We should, okay. We should. Let me see how I get the numbers to you and when. Um, and we can do that for next month. I can distribute those, you know, look at them maybe uh, the following month prior to the funding board meeting, um, you know, or a week or two or whatever. Right, right. You guys, we can get together. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so that was, the, that was the key thing that I wanted to, to ask about. Uh, the um, administrator, the planning board administrator, secretary um, Wanda, has oh. something uh, that you want to say? Okay. The, um, I, if I may, I, I'd like to yeah, take. Please. Well, come on up. Sure. Thank you. I'd um, like to take the opportunity to, to, to introduce to you Wanda Crawley. Uh, Wanda started with the borough in December. Uh, one of, another one of the mayor's marvelous hires. So <laughs> here in Borough Hall. Everybody, as you know, I worked in this building for a couple of years. And, the people here are just fantastic. Everybody works together. It's a great team. Wanda has a background in um, structure management, and, uh, expediting, and architecture. So even though she's new to the Borough of Ketterworth planning and zoning procedural um, strata, mm -hmm. she certainly knows the business overall. Okay. Great. And it's been a real pleasure to work with. Uh, she's still discovering things, as we all do in new jobs. But uh, she's really got to, you know, get it done and uh, work it through, work the problem type of attitude towards it. So here's Wanda. She's our new uh, planning and zoning administrator. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I emailed everyone regarding something about to bring up for a discussion. Um, I'm dealing with escrows. Uh, right. Uh, and it's a daily thing. But I, I talked to Kevin about it. Um, and Bill. Um, What's happening is escrows are going to zero. And when they go to zero, TD Bank decides to get rid of them after a certain amount of weeks. If it goes to months, I, when the applicant decides to come back to file again, I have to do another escrow account. So I was asking Kevin and Bill, could there possibly be a way that I could keep escrow $10, $5, in the account to keep them all open, we, at the end of every project, we do return any escrow that wasn't used. Um, and that has to go through a resolution and stuff. So we give back that money. But it would allow me to keep the application open until they say they want to close it or it is closed. Because I have multiple, multiple applications that are zero that are not coming up on my TV account, but I know that they're there because I see it in endings, I see it. Um, so now when these applicants come back, because a lot of them are 
like incomplete mm-hmm. and they want to come back, you know, um, I'm going to have to open up another account. So it, it really, it's, it's really not an issue, but I think may, it, it, in the future, I think it won't be an issue, but now it is because I'm learning the process. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to get these escrows. No, it sounds like it is an issue. Well, yeah. I mean, it, I'm trying to get them in. Every, in. every board that I work with I had this conversation. Uh, one of my boards had this conversation Monday night. Same issues. Um, and you wind up recommending to the government, because it's a governing body, has to by ordinance, whatever the escrows are, maybe they should be increased. If you don't want to whack the residents, the small people with a deck, but you got to keep. Someone has to keep on top of the escrows because because we don't very often deny things, especially not the planning board side. But if you deny a use variance and there's no escrow, you will never get a penny out of the applicant. Because what are they going to say? Give you a check after you tell them no. So you got to keep on top of. And a lot of boards, if the escrow isn't current, they don't get on the agenda because you we, you need money. It's always good to have a little bit more, especially since it's coming back to them when we're done. So it's not like we keep it. But you got to, and a lot of it is just ballparking how much we're going to need, checking it constantly. constantly to make sure, having a mechanism. And so, so TD is telling the borough. Well, well so that's like, that's sorry to interrupt. So I had two questions from, I read your, talk, talk I, I read your email. That was my question. First of all, Banks. Why are we doing business with TD Bank if they're, if they're doing something that we don't like? And then second of all, why are our escrows getting to zero if they're still active? So those are the two I questions I have. And those two things, if they're corrected, the problem goes away. But, but two things. I have right now at least five projects that went to permit. Okay? And I'm going to have to open up another account because I'm going to have to do that again. So I'm now, technically, they haven't got a permit. It's they just, it's, we put in all our resolutions, you've got to keep I, me up and Cindy with the money. such a good communication that they will not get a, they will not get a CO, they will not get a final permit um, unless those escrows are put. Hey, okay. I've gotten two so far. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, but I still have a few out there that they need to be paid. There's got to be a tickler where if something gets like 500 bucks, don't wait till it gets to 20 bucks. 500 bucks, some, the bells go off. So Mr. O'Brien has his hand. And you ask for more money. Well, Wanda has... Especially for Kevin. The <laughs> day I make the money alert. <laughs> Wanda has a peculiar problem in that uh, and dates back over a year when... Um, Iris took over. Uh, she was given no training, if you remember. There was no mm-hmm. real um, transition. Period. Thank you very much. Transition period. So she had to learn it. It took her months to learn best for her finance. Mm-hmm. Iris figured it out, but Iris in November said she was help. And again, it was very little transition to Wanda. So Wanda walks in. At least she knows the concepts. Mm-hmm. Uh, which um, was unlike what happened previously. And now she's just got to figure out the particular way to do it. And our suggestion had been, go through all your accounts, get your escrows in. You don't need 10 bucks in there, but like when they hit 500, grab another grand. Yeah. And just get the money in until you get things sorted out. Can I, but I'm, you know, yeah, for me, goes on, can the bank do that? To figure <laughs> out the my, my. amount of money that I charge for commercial in a residential app what Harbor gets, the thousands that he gets, and then, <laughs> put, that, and then put that in her equations yeah. as an application. Yeah, I mean, I don't want this to look like I'm criticizing what you're doing, Wanda. Yeah, no. When I hear that, you know, you're, the way I read your email was we have, I'm going to use the term master account for escrow, yeah. and then sub accounts. Yeah. And if the sub accounts go to zero, they close the sub accounts. Yes. But we still have the master account open, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm yeah. saying yeah. we need to find a bank that's not going to close our sub accounts as long as there's money in the master account. That I get a new bank or check check with T, with uh, the bank and uh, you know TD Bank and say, can, is there some way when our sub accounts hit 500? 
you can notify, I mean, they notify us for everything else anyway, bank accounts and credit cards and everything. Can, can you let us know where we, you keep it here? So the bell goes off that we need more money right away. And, and TD Bank shouldn't. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm being tough on TD Bank because oh, yeah. I don't know how much money the barrel has in the that's bank or anything saying. like that. So that's a factor. You know, I know how banks are. If you don't have enough money, you're not a big enough client. They don't. You know they don't do anything special for you, but if you're a big enough client, they should play. They should ball. right, exactly. <laughs> so I would look to do that or have someone from you know from town hall, you the know, mayor, the, mayor, the, the mayor or the clerk or you know somebody call them and day. try to work it out before we implement some new you know ordinance that says we're going to charge an extra ten dollars so that we can keep a sub account open. I don't see that as a reasonable. Once you get caught up, right. money's going to be in the hopper. But right now, I'm not asking for, I'm asking for money from our applicants to pay the bills. Yes. I haven't asked them yet to, for an extra. What's the process when you um, uh, request money from, from the applicant? Uh, I write them a letter. So you review the account and you see what's in the account and say, okay, I need another whatever. So at some point, you... You know, but you're going to see. A TD Bank yeah. comes and they give me their monthly statements. So the bills come in, and then I look at the bills, okay? And then I go to TD Bank and say, okay, what's in the escrow? $500 is in the escrow, but I owe $1,500. So I'll write a letter to the applicant saying, I need another 1000 But that's what I've been doing. I've been asking for another 1000 And then I get that 1000 because they see that they're owed bills, but then the count goes to zero. So I should be asking for twelve hundred and saying the two hundred is a buffer. So is that okay for me to absolutely, absolutely. You always ask for more. Always ask for more. Not outrageous, but you ask for more. Does um uh, I'm, I'm learning here, so I'm glad that... Yeah, I mean, we are too, because I didn't realize what the process is. I don't... Yeah. Oh, do you think doing. our escrows are sufficient? I, Kevin, I would ask you too. Like, uh, what well, do we get for... Yeah, yeah. Um, do we get like $25 for a use Most of them are $1,000 to start off. Uh, no, 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 like the new applications that came in, I think are fine. Um, the applications um, that I know that are coming up, <laughs> that are at zero, that, you know, yeah. I'm going to have to say, no, you can't come here until you pay another escrow. Correct. And you don't have to wait. You can call any time. I mean, if you're eating lunch and see that somebody is uh, short or getting down to 50 bucks, you can call, call them up and write to them. There, there's no time limit. Just make sure that you got enough fluff in there you have to cover. Okay, Mr. So are our fees, can our fees comparable to other towns? Are we lower? Or are we no, good? Or we, we've redone this twice now since 2015. 2015 we redid them. And I think in 19 or 20 we did them. Oh, remember that. Yeah, I remember so that too. We're, we're in good shape. Okay. Um, it's just one needs to get into her cycle. Sure. Yeah. 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 And it's this, as Lou pointed out, yeah. this is the biggest pain in the area for everything. You've got to have somebody who's smart to on top of this to keep that cycle. Yeah. And but even if you're on top of things, in my mind, okay. you could still occasionally get to zero and the bank shouldn't be closing the account. So we still need to talk to TD Bank and say, stop, like call us first and say, like, is this an active account before you close it? Give us three months. Stop it or we'll call it. Right. Well, I really like them just, if it's zero, then you can't close it. At least give me the file that says zero. They're not even doing that. Mm -hmm. When it goes to zero after a month, they told me they, they show me one month that it goes to zero. The next month it's gone. And I'm like, where'd it go? Yeah. You know, I need that. If they have a lot of the borough's money, they should not so, do that. So this, <laughs> if we can just get them to keep I don't I don't find it zero. You know, just give me the file. Give me the file that says zero. So I know. You know, I can keep track because some of them just. Well, I mean, we have we have the <laughs> Mr. Morrow, who's our liaison, and we have the mayor here. And my, I don't know who's responsible for the, our accounts at TD Bank. I'm assuming it's our finance officer. 
someone needs to speak to the finance officer, and then the finance officer needs to speak to TD Bank and set this straight. And then meanwhile, obviously, you know, you need the time to get up to speed with what you know you need to do, and that's perfectly reasonable and acceptable. So, but the bank shouldn't be closing accounts, no. you know. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not on that email. I just oh, no, I don't think I'm not sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's ludicrous. I don't even want to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 So uh, the bank is different story. We'll work that out. Something you said before about um, you know replenishing escrow. And you know the process. You're going to send them uh, a letter, whether they're going to give it to you or not, or a comment letter or not. And then you mentioned something about uh, they don't get their final permits. I mean, does Kenilworth have a system in place where, uh, like, who cons construction code compliance? Who, who's construction? Anthony Yeah, Anthony Mancuso. Okay, so I mean, before anybody gets a permit, right. he knows. Yeah, he knows. They should be. They should, yeah. they, they should be. So no, 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 procedure. no I, we are in great communication. Okay, because I, I, I just heard you said final okay. seal or final permit. I was like, well, I shouldn't even get that far. Like, you know. Well, at this, the, the last few, they were going to final. That's why I said that. No, I'm just saying, it, it, I, uh, I'm a yeah, city no, engineer sure. in Linden, and I, and I oversee the planning zone board, so I know exactly yeah. what you're going through with my admin. And uh, you know they have a system, and I really wasn't sure about yeah. that. No, I mean, as soon as I get, I find out that uh, they need escrow, mm -hmm. and there I hand it right over to Cindy. Oh, <laughs> Here you go, Cindy. Okay. Here's the paperwork. So she has it. She goes, okay. She goes, uh, right. So she reviews that every time. Okay. And looks at it. Oh, you so it's, it's just the bank. Yeah. Kevin, no, it's Kevin, do we charge more in escrow for like a use variance and then yes. per, per C variances? Yes. Yeah. Good. No, no, that's the normal. C. That's the C's normal. are all one. Well, yeah. Yeah, we do. I know boards who do. If you want five dimensional variances, you got to chart it's yeah. five times or whatever the. We made the decision is. to let the C's go because they were fine. Because a lot were residential. And we don't want to whack, you know. No, I understand. Henry had a homeowner for, you know, a side yard, front yard, you know, second floor enclosure. Yeah. We, so, get, we get the commercial side on site plan. Okay. You know, we're, we're so we don't charge any homeowner uh, for dimension that come in with for dimensional one. variances. C so variances. One fee. One, one fee. Okay. okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it thanks to our attention. <laughs> I'm still receiving the TD bank now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I can't even comprehend that. It's like, oh, that's, we just found out PNC is going cashless. Yeah. Tell me what that means. <laughs> I heard that, yeah, that that's going to be like, not just the banks, like that may become Paperless certain, cash yes, cash certain, cashless banks. Cashless, yes. I think some countries are going to start adopting that. And he's sort of like, you want that? No, yeah, sure, no problem. Just tell everybody we get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. What are you going for? Here's a, here's a note. Here's my, here's my marker. <laughs> Go the alleyway and ask Eddie. Tell him that person's okay. They're using it. Knock three times on the door. Uncle Eddie. Creating their own Bitcoin or something. That's scary. All right, what else do we have to discuss? That was um, speaking of past projects. We were going to ask. Oh, I was, yeah, we were going to ask Kevin. I know this is more on like the enforcement side of things, but if you recall probably two roughly two years ago precision elevator came before us to put up a new building yes. on mark road which they never built and there's like these massive cement walls around the property now like does anybody is anybody aware of that well they're going to lose their uh they may have already lost it yeah, yeah. so get an extended it's only like a year or two right well maybe with COVID and the economy they they can have don't want it anymore. I remember three years, um, and then you can ask for extensions. You can ask, they if they don't ask for extensions, then yeah. well, they can ask post back that you don't have. Yeah, well, from. within a reasonable amount of time. Whatever, the, whatever you in court said. <laughs> but from from um, Michigan Avenue, these look like massive wow. bricks or. Boxes. Yes, oh, cement. Big, um, but mass. I mean, they're like this wide, this high, and then 
you know, like this long, all around the property, and they're up about like four feet, three, four feet high. So. Well, that's why we have the forces, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Who represented them? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who represented them? Oh. Maybe a turn a phone call. Oh, yeah. I forget. I have the file if you want to see. Yeah. Steve Hale, or maybe. Uh, yeah, it was probably, it may have been yeah. Steve or something. So, no, Ed Deck was probably the uh, engineer for sure, but. Right. Um, well, he's going to be. But it may have been Hal who represented him. He's going to be. Just to tell you, so there's like an environmental issue there of why there's the work stopped? No, I mean, I don't know why. He, he may have just, the economy turned, you know, ele sure. escalators, like yeah. malls are going extinct and stuff. Maybe, you know, I don't know, but maybe his business turned and he decided he wasn't going to build it, but he doesn't have permission to build this cement structure all around his full perimeter. So, anyway. Yes. Did you see that, I think? Yeah. I didn't start going to as we speak. I haven't seen it in a few days. Yeah. 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 Well, but that was proved. Maggie's the one with the crane. The crane. The Richie Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? Or are you done? Is that in the back there? She did it for me. I'll take care. All right. What else? Does we have anybody? Frank Gibson? Uh, just back on the master okay. plan. So we miss you. Last meeting, Rich was thinking that we were going to do some type of review. Is that what the plan is? Or are we going to wait? Oh, all? Kevin's got everything. Yeah, let's, I don't know if you heard. So Kevin's going to say he might have the numbers completed yeah. by next month. Okay. Then we're going to have a committee meeting. Right. It's so a question master plan we're, committee. Yeah. And then we would with the full board. No, just the committee. Okay. And oh, then we would come that's back. that's already taken care of. We it would just be one meeting, I think, right? You don't, you don't yeah. want to talk about that. One, unless we've got some new ideas. Okay. We can yeah. do, Which we can do. Right. Yeah. Now, we, we've got the luxury no, no. time. I want to discuss it. Okay. Now, we're not under the... the uh, we'll discuss the uh, master plan. Okay. Kevin has the, Kevin has the numbers. Uh, by good? the way... Uh, yeah, because I was... Just to finish the thought, that's uh, part of my question. The last meeting, you weren't here. Very good discussions. So that, that's what attendance was really low, mm -hmm. and um, and then the question came up again: Are we yeah, meeting at six? Or are we meeting at six thirty for the workshop? Right. Right. So I thought part of the reason for the longer well, workshop the workshop is to do so a review of the master plan. Are we still doing that? Well, we. Know. I mean, I don't think if the extra hour was specific to the master plan. I mean, as you know, that there are work sessions where we need riches on. Our chairman's in Vegas. Hello? <laughs> hey, Rich. He wanted to replenish his account. He's flying back to Florida. <laughs> he says, I'm going to end up money in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. You got it. Good to talk to you. Don't lose too much. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Oh, I'm sorry. Is he done? Yeah. Yeah. He calls me the base. Um, what were you we saying? Oh, so, yeah, so what I was saying, Frank, is that, yes, part of it was reviewing the master plan, but at some point the master plan is going to be hopefully completed and, and approved. But many times, and I, and I joked and said, when, especially when the chairman's here, um, you know, our work sessions were going longer than a half hour. We were often five, ten minutes late coming into the public meeting, which, Again, I mentioned previously, I'm kind of a stickler for time. When you tell the public that a meeting's starting at a certain <laughs> time, it needs to start then. So anyway, we decided to extend it to an hour um, so that we would have more time, knowing that there might be nights where 6.30 we're done and then we have a half hour to kill before the public meeting. Because remember, we talked about can we start the public meeting as soon as the work session starts and Lou, I think your ruling was no, you can't. So, <laughs> so right, no, it's still up to me. Next month we're going back to 6.30, I think. Oh, when I wasn't here? Seven. Seven. Oh, I was confused. Seven. Seven. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't hear that. We can't start. And Rich was saying or something? That's yeah. Rich. You know, so his, his thinking changed <laughs> because, like I said, you know, we were, we had, um, well, whatever happened, I, you couldn't make, the, Kevin couldn't make the last meeting. Yeah. And, um, 
And then we were sitting there doing nothing. We were thinking we were talking about master plan, and then you know he had a change of thought. So we and look, there weren't, wasn't many of us here. I'm I was going to. Well, I was here in December. So how was oh, no, the last? Oh, no. last month. I see. Okay. Last month. And so both. It was the January meeting. Okay. For the rest of the year to go back. Back to, to six thirty. Oh, okay. So that I'm telling people. They have numbers. Maybe have numbers next month. We're going to need more. Well, we're just going to have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. the, no, we're not switching again. I didn't realize, like I said, that that was done. Okay. That won't be the committee. That won't be the. That'll be a separate right. meeting, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah we the, so tonight should have technically started at six thirty. Six. No, tonight was. Tonight was still six. Okay. Okay. And then we started. Right. I was. Yeah. He was here earlier. No, I just I was going to say, why weren't, if tonight was advertised at 6.30, it wasn't. why weren't That's you telling me that you don't need to start at 6? from yeah. now on. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so everything I just said, forget Mr. about it. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin said we could possibly, we haven't looked at that master plan in what, 13, 14 months, right? 12 months, somewhere. It's been a while. Last time we looked at it, so and we were able to make edits, right? So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we are going to have a committee meeting after right. Kevin so, finishes. Okay. At least so, one, we may need we more. One of the changes that last time we kind of reviewed everything and you sent out the document, so I just want to refresh yeah. myself before our meeting right. um, and see if there are any changes we want to make. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. things have changed in the last year. Yeah. So. Why don't I uh, send out the last two, the one we adopted last May, and then the previous 2011? I woke up. Right, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just got to my next question. We just got the, okay. uh, the last version that we uh, that you're working on. Right. Right. No problem. Uh, All right. And Mr. Chairman, uh, that um oh I'm sorry. Well, is everybody getting phone calls? No, 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 no. <laughs> Turn your phones off, all of you. It's a mess with that. You have heard that uh, this is an elevator 2018. Well, oh, so they've already... And Steve Hale was the he was, okay. uh, attorney, and those um, okay. rules are gone. Okay. Wow. So they would have to come back for a minute and cite that if they decide to uh, unless he... So the enforcement. Yes, so now it's something that's got to get cleaned up. All right. It's unusual that we will have no time, but usually if they haven't done it within that first one year, they can act. They can yeah, well, I mean, COVID hit, so. I mean, the site plan's been for two and three, yeah, three years. Right. Two and three years, but. Yeah. Three years, but if uh, do, would the board would want me to call, so Steve Hale is the attorney. Yeah. If the board would want me to call Steve Hale for the next couple of days and find out what's going on. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. What what is this? Uh, the elevator. This is precision, precision escalator. 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 Oh, that's yeah. I remember that. Four Mark Road, I think. C I Precision Escalator on Mark Road. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, their, their, their offices are on Michigan Avenue, but they bought the property on Mark Road, and okay. we're going to put another building up. That's I will call okay. Steve. We uh, approved it. I'll call Steve. We'll find out what's going on. To Mark Road. Excuse me. Okay. okay. I'll find out. Yeah. Turn down and get to see it from Michigan. There's a couple of buildings down the last. Yeah. All right. Number what else? Loop so we can send Anthony over there. I'll call. In 818 it was approved? Yeah. So I'll give you the other original. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> okay. I'll see you all anyway, but... Yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Have anything they want to bring up, Mr. Ledo? What's going on? Like, are we allowed to ask about the status of what's going on at the bank on the boulevard? It's, it's started construction or the bank no status rules. of it? No rules. Well, they haven't come before the park. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just well, my thing is like we're always worried about when we're talking about putting new places up or new buildings, and we're always asking that. You know, making sure that it looks nice when you're entrance way into the town. I think that just looks for the center of town. You're talking about Sant the old yeah, Santander? Yeah, it was terrible. Okay. No, we haven't had. And I don't know, no, I know no. that's not part of this board, but I didn't know the status of what's going on with that. 
Yeah. No, they haven't. They haven't made application no, no. to do anything right. with us. Right. Are they doing work? Well, if they're out of um, property maintenance code. We have to have the right person sitting in our room right now, right, Ms. Wanda? Yeah. Um, why don't you take a look at Stan <coughs> and see if there's anything we can do to move them along so it does not look like a piece of garbage. Is it nearing? No. Uh, no, 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 no. It's the, the old Stan Yeah. Next to the church on the know, south yes, side of the boulevard. Right. It's the church. North side of the boulevard. North side. Yeah, no, yeah. It's frustration. Yeah. We got it. I'll look into it. There's a work seizure sticker on the window there already. Anyway, he's been by. He was doing some yeah. demo that shouldn't have been done right. prior, <laughs> prior to the he's also There's also litigation. Yes. Regarding this situation. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it can look like car. Right, right. So right. the only. Right. They still have to maintain the property in accordance with the yeah. property maintenance code. Absolutely. I alluded to that our resolution was uh, 10th of May, 2018. Thank you. Mr. Scuderi has his hand up over there. As a board, I don't know if there's anything we can do, but there's a lot of properties that are vacant throughout town and have been vacant for a long time. And I just don't know if there's anything as a board or a master plan we can do, or there has to be a borough ordinance, or, or what to move some of these properties along. But I'll uh, tell you the subcommittee, uh, the, the committee chair, chair committee for this committee, if I'm saying that all correctly, we're looking at a vacancy ordinance where we could have those properties register, be identified, and maybe think about what we can do with them after that, be it a continuous registration fee, whatever it would be. We, we don't want them to be vacant or at least not aggressively trying to be filled. So that, that is something that we plan to bring to the council. There is one for foreclosures mm -hmm. already on the books. This would expand that to all commercial properties in, in the borough. Just commercial? That's where we're starting. Uh, this is early in the debate. Um, but there, like the, uh, Mr. O'Brien was saying, there's one that applies to foreclosed properties. This should apply to rental properties, uh, residential rental properties, up for discussion. But I can tell you, we are starting that now. Yeah. But it's, do it, they're paying their taxes? It depends on the factors that are unique to the actual situation. Like, like for instance, Mr. Skidari, what kinds of properties are you seeing that are vacant? How do you know they're vacant, and are there property maintenance issues? Well, there's one on Boulevard, the uh, LCD, I know it has some environmental issues, but it doesn't seem like anything's getting done. There's one or two on Market Street that have been vacant for a long period of time. So, okay. I mean, I don't know. You know, they pop in, they pop out, they go up. You know, I guess if it's a few months, there's not really anything you can do about it, but if it's going on a year, I mean, I don't know if it's something that There's a lot of pro applications that come, am I right? And they don't wind up ever building on the property. We just have this conversation. Yeah, Mark, right. Yeah, yeah. They leave it. They just leave yeah. the property. They, well, it's, yeah, it's been... We must have mentioned 10 plus properties right. in our conversation. Yeah. Are any of these marketed? Like, are any of them for sale for no. a developer to come in? No. And one of them, I know uh, somebody actually wanted to purchase the property, and the owner hasn't developed it and won't sell it. Okay. Uh, nice. The base thing I see is $1,700 in the world. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's strange. I mean, it's, uh, it's still such a different store. Well, that's no. It's, uh, no, you're talking about the black. Glass building, yeah. yeah. You've heard of that doctor? Yeah. Dr. Patel, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He wanted that done uh, yesterday. Yeah. 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 Hey, one, one at a time, guys. We are on tape. That particular building has its approvals from this board. Right. And they are in front of construction to get their permits. And he has not followed through on what the building department told them to do in terms of um, fire safety, building safety. So it's his follow-up. And we had a special meeting on that. Oh, so to accommodate him. And we were going to court like three times with mm -hmm. him. And he accused us of everything under the sun. We had a special meeting. We approved it. The attorney okay. was racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was racist. You, you were accused of being There's racist. Also, he didn't have the proper paperwork or white yes, license. Yes, he had nothing. Put it in that place. That was one of the right. He was going to put the wall in the line. 
things in the yeah, back. Yeah, the trailers. Trailers. Right, track and trailers in the back. Yep. So anyway, that's a code enforcement issue. Right. It's from all these here, but it's not what they look at. Yeah. You know, if they have not maintained their, their landscaping and not cleaned up the property, then they got to do it. An empty property at this moment is not awful like you do just because it's empty, but it has to be maintained. Yeah. Kevin, when we were doing the master plan, I don't remember if we actually implemented this or if we discussed it and then discarded it, but we had talked about putting like an, so now I'm thinking of what I refer to as the old Chemco paint <laughs> building, which is next to Dunkin' Donuts, that is completely vacant except for Chinese right. takeout. And, uh, and it's been that way for, you know, probably at least a decade. And so we had talked about during the master plan committee meetings creating, I think, like an overlay behind mm -hmm. the boulevard where there's now residential so that if someone who fronted the boulevard with the commercial property wanted to buy behind them if a house went up for sale and then use that for their parking so that they could, you know, did we do that? I, we talked about it. We didn't there implement it. We a lot it. of discussion about whether you wanted parking lot and residential area. Because yeah, that right. would change the character of those homes. Right, right. As soon as you put a couple of missing teeth in that neighborhood. Right. You, you change, yeah, OK. Right. So we, yeah, OK, that makes perfect so sense. Right. They're dumping donuts now on the property. And I do know that he wants to do something with it. For sure. So that's what I can say about that right now. But, um, but I mean, he's probably wanted to do something f uh, with it for years. So why hasn't he? Is the question. You know, he's not well, making he's application. Or <laughs> so, further along now. Okay. <laughs> and then you have success stories. I mean, that gas right. station corner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we can't fix all the problems in one night, right? Um, what else do we have? Anybody? I just have one. When we're talking about the vacant lot issue, right? Do we need, can that be part of the master plan, or there should not be any vacant lots and upkeep, whatever wording we can have? Mm -hmm. Would that help the situation that council's working on and Mr. Scuderi brought up? Anytime you're going to adjust the land use over there, it's always good to have a grounding in the master plan. As you remember, every time an ordinance goes to council that has to that has to do with land use, our section of the ordinance, section 120, it's got to come to this board, uh, and we have to find whether it is consistent or not consistent with the master plan. So if you're going to do a change, it's always good to have that yeah. on paper in the plan or an amendment to the plan. The master plan is not law. It, it, it's, it's a plan, it's a recommendation. A teeth comes from the governing body via ordinance, which is supposed to jive with, with the master plan. What I'm saying is allowable, like you guys are talking about, maybe defining or something with them, you know, if you can't, if you get over the tax paying issue, then maybe we can add a section into the master plan, sure, to help us out. Right, and as the mayor and our new councilman will find out, I suppose, if you don't know already, um, every time there is something that affects Section 120, it's got to come to this board for review. So there's a whole process between council introduction, planning board review, council adoption, and then master plan is part of that. So again, something we could potentially discuss in committee. Yeah, let's um, find out. When, but is that, know, is that the case though? We think our land use ordinance is short and we don't have, there's not enough teeth in it to, to, for enforcement? Or, or is it the other way discussion? Okay. And maybe Councilman Bill can tell us what they're working on and the reasons for that. And let's kick that around and see what we can do to help. Well, I can tell you the reason is, as Mr. Scuderi articulated, there are a lot of vacant properties around town. You know, last meeting we had one of the residents also come up and uh, speak to the garage, I think you mentioned, on the south side of the boulevard. Uh, it's, it's enough, I think, uh, there are parking issues, like you're saying, right? You can't just force the blockbuster video on, on uh, the boulevard to start renting out and where people are going to park to actually go there. Uh, it becomes a problem. Uh, All right. So it is stuff that we're considering. We also found out that other towns have tried to sort of force the vacancy issue and wound up needing to pass ordinances that you can't have nail salons or hair salons within a thousand yards of each other or something like that. 
But then you come back to, well, is it better to be vacant or have a nail salon every other store? So right. know, these are the things that we have to think about. Right. Uh, but I, I'm not sure we'll be done in a month, uh, but certainly a lot to talk about. Maybe use this uh, panel as a sounding board as well for some of the things that we're talking about before we get as far as council voting, things like that. Okay, sounds good. All right, anybody else? Christian? <laughs> no. Mr. O'Brien, anything else? No? No, yeah. All right. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, adjourn the uh, workshop. Okay, we have a motion. I have a motion in a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, work session is adjourned. So, you ready, Kat? Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm making this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, being Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Laws of the State of New Jersey. The Planning Board Secretary has prepared a schedule of the meetings of the Planning Board of the Borough of Kenworth for the year 2023 has posted a true copy of the schedule on the bulletin board located at the front entrance of Barrel Hall, has mailed true copies of the schedule to the local source in the Star Ledger, and maintains a copy of the schedule in Barrel Hall. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied in regard to this meeting. Can everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Kolovich? Here. Um, Councilman Morrow? Here. Mr. David? Here. Mr. Clemente? Here. Mr. Pantina? Here. Mr. Mazio? Here. Mr. Ligowdy? Here. Mr. Scuderi? Here. Mr. Lomelaria? Here. Okay, we have quorum to proceed. Uh, first item is approval of the minutes of May 12th. Would May someone like to make May a motion? Jan to May Jan no. Motion. I'll second. Well, one correction. It says oh. it does say May 12th, 2023, but that's 2022. 2022. Okay. Oh, that's All right. So we have a motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Next up is communications. Madam Secretary, do we have any communications? No. All right, we can move on. Old business, the oath of office for Councilman Morrow. I believe that's been taken care of, so we're good there. Uh, resolutions, we don't have any. And so that brings us right down to new business. And tonight we have one application. It's application 5-22, which is 6 North 21st Street, Kenworth, New Jersey, block 81, lot 28. Uh, Kathy, how are we on those? Yeah. Oh, those in publication are good. Just a reminder to the board that in that a use variance is involved, we'll be wearing our zoning board hats tonight, which means the class one member and the class three member the mayor and Mr. Morrow do not participate in this in this application by law. Okay, okay Mr. Goodman. Uh, Gary Goodman on behalf of uh, K Town LLC, the owners of 6 North 21st Street. Uh, this is a building that um, is under uh, on an undersized lot. Uh, these are all pre-existing non-conformities. Your zone requires 100 foot uh, depth. It's only 63.21 feet deep. This is a uh, 2,500 square foot required lot. This is undersized, 2,481. The rear yard setback requires 10 foot. You have uh, you require 10 foot. We only have one foot. And the impervious uh, uh, is a requirement of 90 percent, and we have. 100 percent so this is an undersized property that for a number of years uh, has been vacant on the first floor uh, there currently are two apartments on the second floor it's in the boulevard downtown zone there's an overlay the intent of this zone uh, indicates that while residential is permitted in this zone it is not permitted on the first floor and when it is permitted, we, uh, the, the ordinance speaks to having two bedroom apartments with a minimum size of 600 uh, foot. The, um, as you have seen from your observation, uh, the, uh, the building is not that aesthetically 
uh, up to date and uh, uh, it does need work. The applicant has tried since he purchased it uh, for uh, some three years to try and rent the first floor. He will be testifying and indicate that he retained one broker and then switched to a second broker and has not had any success in renting it commercially. His proposal tonight for your consideration is to build a, a retrofit the first floor into two one-bedroom apartments, one uh, undersized at 575 square foot, both being one bedroom. Uh, he will also uh, be uh, providing a handicapped parking space, which reduces his parking on site from five to four, which would be a parking place per uh, apartment. Uh, this evening I have a number of people to testify in addition to the owner Joe Bonanno or the managing member and owner of uh, K-Town LLC. Uh, you'll hear from our architect Theodora Bayardis. Uh, you'll hear from our planner John Leon Cabello and also I will ask uh, a uh, uh, Andrew Weissman, who is a, a real estate uh, person, uh, head of the leasing division, uh, apartment leasing division at Weikert over in Westfield uh, to provide some testimony. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to call uh, Theodora Bayardis. Okay, very good. She could come up. Uh, where best to position the uh, easel so uh, uh, that uh, is the public, uh, is there a camera? Okay, you want it over there? Okay. If I can't see it, can I walk up there? Please do. Okay. It's some, you can sit, it's you know, sit in the corner there. So, Mr. Goodman, before we actually start with um, the presentation and or testimony, we maybe just wait a minute or two. Our videographer just walked in, so I just want to give him a minute to set up. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, Christian, our architect, uh, read your report okay. and prepared a site plan. I think you were indicating that you didn't mind having a post here, but uh, you did. Okay. Okay, so with your permission, I'll pass out what you did. Let me, let me stop for a minute. Um, Ms. Briages, uh, before I swore you in, everything you're going to be showing us we already have or no? The first sheet, no. yes. The site plan is no. This is new. All right. So we're going to we're going to mark this A1. Kevin or Christian, do you have any issues with getting it tonight? No. No. <laughs> See how expensive it is. Okay. Maybe we can highlight the differences. Okay, so this is, um, is he ready? Okay. This is a site plan uh, dated today, well, no, dated uh, June 14, 2021. It's updated to today, prepared by the Boyages for Market A1. Can I give it a thumb? Yep. I think revised to February 9th. Yeah. Yes, two nine twenty three. Ms. Bihar, is the uh, we all set? Why yeah, I, we're good. Thanks. Why don't I swear the witness in? If you could raise your right hand, please. With regard to this application, do you swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth? Yes. Can you state your name and spell both your first and last name? Theodora Boyages, T H E O D O R A B O Y A D J I S. 
Thank you. Ms. Goyard, Mr. Chief, you did a board, your qualifications to testify as an architect? Yes, I was licensed in New Jersey in 2015. Um, I have a Bachelor of, Ar uh, bachelor of Architecture, um, and I've been in front of this uh, um, board. Your licenses are current? Yes. Board, everyone's okay with the, uh, okay, credentials. Uh, Ms. Bayardis, uh, uh, you've been retained by uh, Cape Town LLC uh, to uh, draw up the retrofit of the first floor into two apartments. Yes. Could you explain to the board what exists now? Uh, now it's a vacant office space. And what is proposed for the space? Two one bedroom apartments. Uh, one of those units would also be um, handicap accessible. Uh, can you uh, explain to the board the square footage of each, what each apartment contains? Um, each apartment contains um, one bedroom, a kitchen, a living space, um, laundry closet, and a bathroom with a, one shower. They, um, because of the size of the building, we, are, we can't do an addition, so I, we were limited on the size of each unit. One unit is 575 square feet. The other unit is uh, 660 square feet. Um, so we tried to make it as conforming as possible. We, we tried to squeeze as much space as we can into each, each unit um, to make it comfortable living um, and still try to maximize the square footage. And Ms. Bilardis, can you explain to the board what the existing facade is now and what is the proposed changes to that facade? The facade now is stucco and it's in need of um, repair. Uh, so we're proposing that we uh, repair and uh, good power wash and good paint. Um, what we're proposing on the first floor level is new stucco to um, the texture to match the existing and then we would paint the whole building. Um, we're also proposing to have a new roof um, above the doors of the first floor. To, we're, right now it's a shingle and it's a little bit bulky for the facade so we are looking to maybe make it slimmer and, and do a metal roof on it. We also want to um, change the trim at the top of the tire pit wall to make that a little bit more modern. Um, and we are fixing up the doors and also the windows that are there. Uh, Ms. Bjorgis, can you? Oh, I'm sorry. And one more thing, we're also looking to put um, brick at the at the base of the building as well to dress it up a little more. Uh, the parking situation, uh, what will be done with that parking lot? The parking lot now has five spots um, because we're talking about having to uh, handicap accessible that also requires one uh, handicap accessible um, parking spot so that reduces the parking to four but it, it would be a van accessible spot there we are planning on um, repaving the parking the whole driveway um, repairing the curb at the front where it is the street um, new painted lines and new lighting as well um, for lighting we're talking where we discussed putting recess lights in the roof, the canopy over the front doors, and then also have lights that shine into the parking lot that are, would be motion censored for the parking spots. I saw a comment, I believe, from one of the Calvert professionals about the bollards that are in front of the building. Are we keeping those, redoing them? What are, what are um, we doing? We can definitely change them out um, to be a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, there was another comment about uh, garbage. How is garbage handled now? How will it be handled? Um, now it seems that the cans are kind of all over the place, at least the last time I was there. But there is some space on the left side of the building. There's a concrete slab there that we could put um, at least three or four garbage bales. And snow removal? Snow removal. Because the site is um, small, it's limited, um, the only thing we could do is probably take over one of the parking spots for the snow removal. Uh, is there any place for a tree to be planted on the site? 
I don't know, there isn't, at least not in the front area. I mean, in the back area, there's a small sliver of space, but it's so close to the building, it wouldn't be recommended. Questions for the board? Board members? You, you mentioned repair the windows and the doors. Does that mean repair or replace? Oops, sorry, replace. Replace, replace. the doors, um, replace the doors and replace the windows with something um, more appeasing to residential use and also something that would go with the rest of the neighborhood. Hi. Um, I see your architect plan and I see your site plan that you did. Where would your, if you were to put these two apartments on a bottom, where would your utilities connections be? They're not showing any. The utility connections are already on the side of the building, on the right side. Um, the for the first floor too, that I, believe I mean, you had, I guess you had right, some connections right. for the retail or commercial. You had there before, so you right. would use the same ones even for even with two apartments. You wouldn't need a separate one for a second apartment. Um, we, we haven't gotten to the part of how many more we would need. I do believe. Hold on, okay, I do. Have... Well, you're shown on the site plan. That's why I'm the only on this. One. Well, um, this, the site plan was more in response to the. The parking, but we will definitely um, get an answer. So it looks like there are three active um, electrical meters, but it looks like there used to be at least one more there um, that's mounted on the wall. So we could easily add a, a, a fourth electrical meter. What would be for water? Water and gas. And Water and gas are all in the basement, so we would be able to add those. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, the gas is also on the side, which is further back. Um, it is, it is um, covered by the uh, by valleys, so we can, there is room for a, a fourth gas meter. But the water I know is definitely down in the basement. Is there a basement? There is a basement, yes. Currently, uh, the basement being used. It's unfinished. It's, it's strictly just for utilities. What's the headroom? It looks like it's. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't measure that. It's like it's. I don't know. It's like it's. You're having a sign walk. Me, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, they got it. Okay, it's not it's not it's outside, they want to the function. Yeah, no, okay. clearly. Okay. I have, I have stairs on the plan. Yeah, I'm sorry. One at a time. Well, if one go up, and then the reason we have the hallway is to get to the access to the basement. Would it possibly be used for storage for the residents? Um, if cleaned up, I think it could be. Uh, that's, that would be at the discretion of the owner. The, uh, the, your note on the site plan uh, indicates that um, the parking area will be repaved with new asphalt and curb to be repaired? Yes. But the leader line is just in the parking area. Would you consider uh, replacing the sidewalk, concrete sidewalk along the property frontage with repairing the curb? Uh, that, would be, that would be under the discretion of the owner. Um, if it's not a hazard, but that would be under his discretion. Um, if it's a hazard, then we would absolutely fix it. Well, it could be under the discretion of the owner. I think it would be up, up to the Federal engineer, satisfaction to you, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I have no issues with putting sidewalk in. Um, actually, I can cut this side, to be honest. Okay. But um, there is sidewalk on either side yes. for the residential, so it would make sense to connect. Okay. Any other members have questions? Um, but it's going to be central air, or there going to be units outside, or? For each of these apartments, or we were, uh, I believe we were discussing uh, many split units. Okay. They do, but those are much smaller. Yeah. Than yeah. Much yeah. Small. Okay. Okay. Mr. Scudero. Would there be many changes to the HVAC in the second floor? Uh, the removal of the units hanging out? Uh, no, that was not part of our second floor. Okay. You're just trying. No, there, there'll be a time where it'll be open to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Any 
any other board members have any more questions? Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Prado, do you have anything of this witness? I can go. Um, the architect answered most of my questions from, uh, uh, most of my comments from my letter. Um, the the uh, ADA space, the uh, replacing the asphalt driveway and curbing and doing the sidewalks left now, um, adding lighting. Um, she addressed all my comments. <laughs> uh, only um, at this moment, let me see where the testimony goes, but um, we should know where those AC splits are going to go. And if they are going to be wall mounted to confirm that. Did you, uh, Mr. Scudero, sorry. Yeah, just, uh, we talked about what we were going to do in the front facade. Are you going to be uh, cleaning and repainting the whole building? The rear and the sides also? Um, well, that was the testimony. Paint the whole building. The whole building? Correct. The, to paint, yes. Uh, I don't know about stuccoing the building, but definitely painting it. Okay, is that it? One more. What's oh. the uh, condition of the flat roof right now? Uh, I'm not aware of what the condition is. That's something we look at uh, later when we get to the permit. Please. All right. I think that's uh, all of you can proceed, Mr. Gibbon. Thank you. Mr. Yes, Gibbon. Could you raise your right hand, please? With regard to this application, you swear the testimony you were about to give shall be the truth. I do. Could you state your name and spell your last name, please? Joseph Bonanno. The last name is spelled B-O-N-A-N-N-O. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bonanno, you're the owner of K-Town and Wilson? I am. Uh, you heard some of the comments from the professionals. So let's go over them. Uh, with regard to the sidewalk, uh, you're prepared to extend or replace the sidewalk? Yeah, I'll uh, comply with them. Uh, the township pays me to do or put forth my efforts to do whatever it needs. Uh, have you been in the basement? I have. You know the height of the basement? It's approximately eight feet. Eight feet? Seven feet, yes, and I'm eight feet. Enough for more space. And that could be cleaned up for storage for the tenant? Absolutely, yes. Uh, do you have any plans for um, uh, upgrading or renovating the second floor apartments, uh, air conditioning wise? At the current moment, no. Uh, okay, so let's talk about your efforts to try and lease this space for commercial. Uh, you purchased, <coughs> excuse me, you purchased the property when? Uh, in December of 2004. And what have you done to try and uh, did, did it have a tenant in the first floor when uh, you bought it? When I initially purchased the uh, property, there was no tenant in the first floor. The uh, gentleman who who, list, who had who sold me the building attempted to lease it for about about a year and a half. He had no um, no interest in it. Then we switched to Coldwell Banker, and once again, really no interest in uh, leasing it as office space. And so uh, at this time, your proposal is for renovating it for residential? Correct. Questions for Mr. Benana? Board members? Do um, you have a feel for why you're not able to, to lease it for the office space? Is it, is it the appearance of the building? Is it location, um, cost? I believe possibly location. Um, that is a residential block. It was an office, uh, end of office beforehand. So I don't know if there is uh, any interest in it. It's also a one-way street, is it not? Correct. You're going down the boulevard and you want to turn in there, the only best way to go is to go one block over and go around, correct? Correct, yes. Are you aware that there's no parking in the lot across the street if there's ever overflow? <clears throat> yeah, I'm totally aware of that. Um, with this being residential, we probably actually cut down on parking. Is that a guest or something? All this space wouldn't be able to park it down. We've got a guest. Yeah. Yeah. Any other board members have a question? Yes. 
building. I see the back of the building. The back of the building is the rear, the rear lot from the commercial property that is on the building. Got it. Last night. The driveway to the right is associated with that property. That is not what you're Yeah, that's not part of this property. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Ryan or Mr. Credo, any questions of the No, thank you, Chair. Yeah. All right, that's good. We're done. Uh, I'd like to call Andrew Weissman. Weissman, could you raise your right hand, please, with regard to this application? Do you swear the testimony you're about to give show me the truth? I do. Could you state your name, spell your last name, please. Andrew Weissman, W E I double S M A N. Thank you. Yeah, well, I have to qualify Mr. Weissman as an expert to give testimony as to the rental market for apartments. Um, Mr. Weissman. Uh, you are currently with Wycott Realtors? I have. And what was your position? I head up the rental team. And when you say rental team, the rental team that rents apartments in the area? We specialize in rentals as opposed to homes. Home sales. And in the course of the last uh, recorded data from Wycott, how many transactions has your division been involved in? Approximately 250. And you personally are, were involved in how many transactions? 149. Uh, I would like uh, to qualify Mr. Weissman to give testimony with regard to the rental of apartments in the uh, Union County area uh, as a uh, real estate professional. Could I ask, where, where are you based? Out of So you're close by? Yes. Okay. That's it. Okay. Is everyone okay with the qualifications? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Weissman, uh, uh, you have listened to Mr. Bonato and the architect's plan for building two one-bedroom apartments on the ground level at 6 uh, North 21st Street. Uh, is there a, a need for ground level uh, uh, one-bedroom apartments? There is an overriding need for one-bedroom apartments because the population is aging, and there are a lot of people who can't do stairs. And recently, there have been a lot of larger development, developments built uh, that people don't necessarily want to be in. And if you're handicapped, or uh, if you're handicapped, you definitely need a first floor apartment. And if you're older and you don't want to do stairs anymore, you have a need for that. And right now. If I had five or ten more one-floor apartments on the first floor, I could rent them instantly. And that's in the Union County area. So uh, most of the apartments being built today are uh, newer structures, elevator buildings. Uh, is there, um, uh, what is uh, a one-bedroom in a elevator building go for? Opening price is anywhere from about twenty-two fifty to uh, thirty-five hundred. And if I could just uh, call out Mr. Benano is under uh, oath uh, to answer one question, which I forgot. Yes. Benano. Mr. Benano, with regard to the market point that you're looking to rent apartments, these one bedrooms, where where are you looking? We are looking uh, under two thousand dollars open price. And Mr. Uh, Weissman, is there an abundance of apartments under $2,000, uh, so one bedroom in the Union County area? Uh, no. There are uh, a lot of multifamily homes. Uh, a lot of them uh, do not have laundry facilities within the apartment. If they have them at all, it would be in the basement. Again, having requiring somebody whose mobility challenge to have to go downstairs. So these apartments with laundry facility within serves another need that's uh, underserved at the moment. Questions for the board? Board members. Good, thank you. Uh, might not be in your bailiwick, but any ideas as to why commercial hasn't 
worked here on the first floor? It's um, not really because my area of expertise is residential, but if I can make a statement generally on commercial, a lot of our towns are having trouble filling commercial spaces. Downtown Cranford, downtown Westfield, we have an abundance of open uh, units right now. I think if you think about it, people, when we were growing up, every town had a men's store, a boy's store, a butcher, a hardware. All of that's gone. You know, with Amazon and Shopify, internet, uh, the need for commercial space is just dwindling. And after the pandemic, uh, my clients from uh, Price Waterhouse have informed me that there's going to be, once these leases run out of the commercial buildings, there's going to be a lot more space available. Thank you. Anyone else? I had a couple questions. Um, first one, how many transactions have you conducted in Kenilworth? So you mentioned you did like 250. And the group did uh, 250, I did 149. Okay. Um, this year I actually have done none in Kenilworth. Okay. My other question is, how many first floor apartments are there in Westfield's business district? None. Thank you. You're good, Mr. A question, if I may. Yes, yeah. not your question, Sharon. Given COVID, the pandemic, um, the market forces, and the um, opening of a lot of commercial space, would you anticipate that other towns such as Westfield and Cranford might? have to go to the first floor apartments or something like that? Or do you I, think that there's a market need for it? There's a definite market need for it. And, you know, the uh, people who own these spaces are not collecting any rent. So at some point, they've got to go for some relief. And with the population aging, as I mentioned earlier, first floor is a natural progression. I think that might be it, Mr. Good. Okay. Um, thanks. Okay. Uh, I call the planner, John, the land developer. John, could you raise your right hand, please? With regard to this application, do you swear the testimony you're about to give show me the truth? I do. Thank you. Good. Uh, I give us your name again, spell your last name for the record. John, last name, Leon Cabal, all one word, L-E-O-N-C-A-D as in Victor, A-L-L-O. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I've worked with Mr. Leon Cabal for far too many years, both on this side of the aisle and on the other, provided that his license is a good standing and apparent, I'm hardly recommended to the board as a professional. I concur. All right. I think board, we're okay. Thank you. Very good. I appreciate you. We have an exhibit for this. I have an exhibit uh, for everyone and uh, at the dais and here next to uh, you know, Mark, this A2, A2 and John, if you could describe what it is when you're passing it out. Okay, this is a, a series of uh, maps and uh, documents and photos. A story of, um, Did you prepare these or were they prepared under your supervision? These were prepared uh, with my associate, uh, John McDonough. Oh, yes. John McDonough Associates.
Okay, I'll just go over these quickly. Okay, the first page is, uh, as it says uh, in the title block, a tax parcel map. Uh, the center of the page shows 81-28 highlighted. That's the lot we're talking about. It's an undersized lot. Has a uh, several uh, uh, discrepancies or in, in, insufficiencies, I mean, uh, for uh, uh, bulk requirements. Uh, and show it's on North 21st Street, the, uh, the north side of uh, 21st Street, a couple of uh, blocks from here. Uh, Second one is uh, an aerial map. The source of this is New Jersey uh, Geographic Information uh, Systems. Uh, it's you know, the address 6 North 21st Street again. Uh, it's highlighted. It shows toward the left or the south of the property in question. Uh, horizontally uh, is the boulevard, uh, which is the uh, commercial corridor. To the, um, to the um, north is uh, a number of older homes. I'll show a picture of those in a minute. And then some larger homes, uh, which are two families. Uh, the, low, the, the smaller homes on the narrower lots uh, were pre-existing uh, uses, I guess, under a different zoning scheme. Uh, and then the zoning scheme uh, turned to uh, our, uh, our and uh, at the larger lots, which you can see from the rooftops, are the uh, two family structures uh, in the zone. Next page is number three, uh, and then that has the commercial uh, service and other urban uses in red. Uh, the property in question is, is located within that uh, commercial service area, and then the residential uses are in yellow. Um, which kind of indicate that you know, the, car, the commercial corridor uh, of the boulevard uh, holds the commercial uses and then beyond those uh, are the progression of, of residential uses. Uh, the next page is the zoning map. It comes from uh, the zoning documents. Uh, Again, the boulevard area is attached to the light blue, and that's the uh, boulevard uh, downtown district, uh, which also includes uh, one of the, old, the residential overlay zone, uh, which then allows this use to uh, come before the zoning board adjustment uh, tonight for the uh, D1 uh, use variance. Uh, R5A is to the north. Uh, the property, and that shows the one-family and two-family structures. Uh, G is the government district. C, way to the left of the page, is a commercial district. And I believe uh, uh, the light green uh, is the uh, R5 medium density, single-family only. Next page, this is taken with a drone, which we we'll get now. Rather than being at the, uh, the height of an aerial, uh, which is standard, something in the magnitude of 1,000, 1,500 feet above uh, the grade of, of the area, uh, we're looking more or less at a bird's eye view that's closer. You can see and really pick out where the site is, kind of towards the left of the center. You can see the parking spaces in front, which are one you can count them, which are five spaces in the front. Uh, the gentleman who asked the question about the building on the right is the driveway on the property. It is not. The driveway is basically almost the uh, uh, the footprint of the of the building and the uh, and the parking. Um, it's very very tight and is about 100 percent impervious. Uh, you can see some of the older buildings uh, right immediate to the to the north of there. They're smaller and the, the lots are narrower, and then the larger ones again are the, are the two-family. There's one large two-family across the street which has banked on each side uh, two-car garages. Uh, you can see how much larger that has to be to accommodate that kind of, uh, kind of plan on that building. And again, right on off of uh, the uh, 
commercial uses or I mean, the, the uses that are there, which are a residence, not a residence, a bar or a restaurant. Uh, there's the, uh, the liquor store adjacent to the property in question, and then some other commercial uses up and down the uh, boulevard. And the last page shows number six, shows the property in question at the top left. And then you can see the smaller houses, which really have been renovated through the years, uh, but still accommodate what was here maybe back in the, uh, in the 50s and the 60s at some point. And then you can see on the second half of that page, which then takes the property in question in that first White House and extends it down uh, North 21st Street. And you can see where across the street uh, is the two family, which has uh, two car garages uh, and uh, two stories and, and balconies. Uh, and down the street on, on the side of the uh, property in question are uh, two family homes that's more of a standard uh, size of the house. That is the exhibit. And I'll just go into the testimony quickly. Anybody has any questions on the exhibit? If you can answer it, if not, we'll write it in my testimony. I'm qualified, as I said, I'm a licensed professional planning in the state of New Jersey, and my license is in good standing. Uh, in preparation for this testimony, I looked at uh, the uh, existing conditions on and about the site, proposed conditions, uh, several ordinances, and the master plan uh, that was last revised and updated by uh, Mr. O'Brien, I believe, in 2011. Uh, the exhibits or the maps that we have just gone over. Um, the site itself is approximately 2,700 square feet. Uh, it has developed two apartments over a vacant commercial uh, space, which has been vacant for several years, as I understand it. Uh, so I would say two or three years, maybe. Uh, the area is a transitional lot. Uh, between the commercial use, which is on the boulevard, and the residential uses on 21st Street. The plan here is to convert uh, the vacant commercial use, uh, which is stagnant and uh, not, not being able to uh, rent, and to create two apartments. Each apartment uh, will be smaller, it will be just a one-bedroom apartment. But in this case, it's good to have a smaller use than a larger use. Uh, the zoning considerations are the zone here is the Boulevard Downtown District plus the RO or the Residential Overlay District. Uh, the residence, uh, residential use is allowed in the zone but only on the upper floors uh, and therefore that's why we need the, uh, the D variants uh, on the, uh, the approval of the zoning board adjustment. The second and third floors uh, will be uh, residential. The first floor uh, by, by your uh, requirements in your zone uh, requires that you can't have a residence on that first floor. Uh, the zone release then, the relief that we need then is the D1 use variance to allow residential use on the ground floor uh, in this tra transitional lot. And when I say a transitional lot, as you look at the property, you can see that it transitions from what is in to the south of it, which is the uh, commercial element. Of, of, your, uh, of your town uh, and goes to the residential, which is directly in the back as far as there. So it actually has two faces, and you can look at it as having commercial uh, balance for extension uh, to go one way, and then it also buffers the residences uh, to the north. Um, the justification for the D1 use variance is the applicant meets, or the application meets the four elements of proof uh, under the uh, Medici test, uh, under the uh, New Jersey's uh, case law. Site suitability is an important element. The site is particularly suited uh, for this residential use by virtue of its condition and its context. In terms of its context, the site is a transitional lot um, between residential and non-residential uses. High density residential is an appropriate land use progression from low density residential to non-residential use, which is what we have here with, from commercial uh, to residential or vice versa, from residential to uh, non-residential or commercial development in this case. In terms of the condition, uh, the buildings uh, 
proposal is a, a retrofit of the existing space. We can't do much with it. The use of the existing uh, space provides planning benefit of reducing uh, the impacts of new construction on adjacent uh, uses. Uh, and especially as you can see from the pictures, uh, we have the residential uh, use impacting on, on, the, uh, on the commercial piece or vice versa. Special reason for the, uh, the project uh, is that this provides what's called missing middle housing. Middle, missing middle housing is a planning solution to fill the gap between smaller detached uh, dwellings and large apartment complexes. Not everyone can afford uh, to live in a one-family house, and not everyone wants to live in an apartment complex of two or 300 apartments. Missing middle housing advances the planning goal to provide a variety of uses appropriate uh, in appropriate locations according to the needs of all New Jersey citizens. The project also advances conventional planning goals for efficient land use and putting unproductive and underutilized uh, land back into productive use. Adaptive reuse is as efficient a way uh, that we have of getting uh, plan, uh, that gets uh, from uh, that you can get from a planning standpoint. All the uh, above uh, promotes the uh, purposes of the municipal land use law. Uh, those are A, E, G, I, and N under uh, municipal land use law in New Jersey. Those uses talk about uh, A, uh, to promote a uh, general uh, welfare, uh, E, to promote establishment of appropriate population densities, G, to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations for residential uses. In, in this case, we're, we're going from a commercial use to a, uh, to a, a residential uh, element uh, within the structure. I, to promote desirable visual environment through creative development techniques, whatever we can do. We're limited on this property, but uh, there are a number of things that we can do to improve and make it more appropriate for uh, entire residential development. And then encourage coordination among different parties uh, to uh, efficiently use the land in an efficient manner. The uh, next uh, element is uh, public impact. The architectural testimony is that the space accommodates the uh, residential uses comfortably and meets all building codes and market demands. The use is definitely on a, a transitional lot, is compatible with the area. It's a small in scale infill that integrates well and uh, will be a low intensity uh, use next to uh, more conventional single family homes uh, in this case, instead of being those two families, but they're just down the block within the same area. Zone plan impact, uh, relief relates to the distinct lot, uh, which not is a whole zone, and the relief is not tantamount to a, a rezoning whatsoever, in my opinion. For the above uh, reason, relief uh, at the district site will not impair uh, 2011 uh, master plan policies, and the board uh, can also give deference to the fact that the site is on the edge of the residential zone. So it works both ways in this case, where you have a buffer from residential to uh, commercial right now, and this will uh, make it uh, more the need of for more residential buffer not needed because we're going to another residential use but at a different density. Um, Justification for relief for the C relief uh, is that all C relief is justified either under a C1 hardship or C2, uh, the balancing test. Uh, to pass the test, uh, either C1 or C2 needs to be met, and sometimes they both have to be uh, required or are required. Justification under the C1 relief relates to the land and the structures lawfully there existing thereon. And, and, uh, as it is required or said uh, and reported in the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law. The application is a retrofact of existing space, uh, working with what's already there, that's what we have to do, and we're limited to what we can do and what we can provide. There are practical difficulties achieved with more parking and more building area on site when you're 
dealing with an insufficient lot size and a number of other uh, bulk requirement deficiencies. Under uh, Section 2, the balancing test, the benefit of uh, the project as a whole has to outweigh the detriments. That's in uh, regard to the Pullen case uh, under uh, state uh, case law. All of the, uh, the benefits here cited uh, carry forth, and C variances are necessary to effectuate uh, the creation of, of this project that we're proposing it tonight. None of the C variances will cause impacts of substantial adverse nature. Parking supply meets uh, reasonable demand, given that the size of the units, uh, the walkability of the area, the access to transit is bus stop. Uh, right at, uh, to the right at the corner of uh, the boulevard. Uh, and the project uh, provides at least one space per unit uh, for parking. Uh, popular, retail, uh, popular retail use can generate much greater uh, parking demand on that small lot. So this is the least impact uh, with parking. The unit size is reasonable and appropriate, and as stated, is fully compliant, uh, fully color compliant. My conclusions are that the relief at uh, this location will revitalize the space uh, without ruining the integrity of the downtown, which is very important to your master plan. The site relates more uh, to the use on 21st Street, uh, which is a residential street. The site does not uh, front or face boulevard, uh, so relief does not break up any rows of storefronts. And, uh, in conclusion, the statutory criteria, I believe, is meant for all relief and approval is respectfully warranted. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those for you. Board members? One thing, um, Mr. O'Brien's report mentioned that one of the units would fall under the affordable housing for the borough of Kenilworth. So is that the plan that one of the units will be? Well, under the, the direction of, of, you know, of the tax, uh, if, if you say we should be required uh, you know, to provide affordable housing, we may be able to do that. I don't know if you are. I, I, have, I haven't reviewed the record on affordable housing. So, okay. to, uh, Mr. O'Brien, I, I raised a question, Mr. Clemente, because any site application with four or more units has to provide 20% set aside. In this case, that would be one, 25% of four. And I raised the question in the report for both the board and council, both councils, as to whether or not this four unit site plan is indeed four units because only two are proposed. Uh, so it's a question of interpretation of law and you beat me to asking Mr. Lee and Law with his interpretation of this, but I will leave that for the board and council to decide as to is this a four unit uh, site plan or a two unit site plan. It's four, one, should, one has to be affordable. If it's two, then they just have to pay the fees like everybody else. Okay. Mr. I have some questions, but um, my first question is. Mr. O'Brien, can we get your comment on this first, or on the affordable housing component, or no, on, on the uh, on, on the, the on, on this with on this witness on the uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lee Cabal and uh, um, his colleague, Mr. McDonough, prepared a fine presentation to you with the uh, handouts that we ask for every time somebody comes. Um, Okay. I believe he's addressed the statutory criteria. Okay. Whether it's to your satisfaction. No, well, I'm going to, to I'm, I'm going to ask some questions, but I didn't know whether you wanted to expand on your letter. Oh, to Mr. Lee, but not only in terms of affordable housing. Okay. Um, I think the uh, the testimony by your clients uh, have been very detailed and very informative, as well as our professional reports. Um, I understand the. Uh, I guess the point of having a zoning board is to give out changes when necessary or when suitable. Um, I, um, looking at the architect's plan, 
It's and the reports provided. Uh, I, I would tell you, asking for five variances, I think, is a lot. That's my opinion. Um, the use variance um, apartments on the first floor, understandable. You have a well, I wouldn't call it a hardship, but uh, the fact that you haven't been able to rent the first floor in any you know, any time uh, is challenging. I guess that could be considered a hardship. Um, but um, again, my opinion is that uh, you're asking for five variances. I think it's pushing the limit. Um, the proposed apartments require 650 square feet. On one of them, you're short. Sorry. Um, the um, seven apartment, seven. huh? You're short 75 feet on one. Yeah, I get it. Um, uh, the apartments, um, your your report, Mr. O'Brien, and I guess the requirements uh, in the zone are having a uh, minimum 650 square feet, minimum two bedrooms. Uh, you're provided two on, on the first floor, and the parking's already kind of like in question. So uh, my thoughts, um, again, my opinion, is that um, instead of proposing two one-bedroom apartments on the first floor, if you just propose one two-bedroom apartment, you'll cut down the parking requirement. You won't need the um, habitable floor area uh, variance. You won't need the two other variances for the uh, bedrooms. You only need two, the use and the parking, and the parking requirement will go down like six and a half, which I guess you can go either way. There won't be one short. So um, that's my comments. Mm -hmm. You can rebut them or you can uh, just- Well, I think- That's we, my opinion. First of all, it, it's a great issue of the size of the lot. We don't have any area to do anything with this law. We can't expand it in any way. We can't reduce it in any way. Uh, the site plan that you have to put together uh, does not allow anything in the front to be moved uh, because you need some parking. The only place you can do it is in the front. We need a variance for that. We can't add any more. There's nothing surrounding this property that we could add to, uh, to our lot. Uh, you have an existing condition where you had two uh, commercial units there um, prior to this. And now he wants to replace each of those with the residential units. It seems proper from his standpoint um, that he should be able to do that. Uh, but if, if you're adamant that uh, we have too many variances, you can uh, impose restrictions or limitations as to what you, the board wants to do uh, and ameliorate that in some way. Um, so if you decide to do that, we would have to discuss that and see if the project is viable, I think. I don't know the, uh, the applicant's uh, financial interest. Maybe the attorney can talk about that. It's not really a, a reasoning uh, for giving a, or not giving a, a variance. So. Yeah, um, it would seem um, that certainly you could do a very nice two-bedroom apartment there. It would be upscale. You could probably get a good number uh, for rent. Uh, however, the uh, consideration that the applicant has given is to try in requesting these, uh, these uh, variances to fulfill a need. Uh, as our testimony has brought out, there is a need for uh, first floor, uh, one bedroom, uh, units that are affordable. Uh, and to add another $2,700 two bedroom apartment, uh, doable perhaps, but uh, I think it, it does not recognize the needs that we have identified and are trying to fulfill. Uh, so there was a desire uh, to provide uh, these smaller one bedrooms. Um, we had done some market research with Mr. Weissman's firm, and the feeling was uh, that uh, there's a need, try and fulfill the need. Um, if uh, the board says uh, the variances, I mean, we have a lot of pre-existing non-conformities, 
uh, and you have we have to have a variance for one bedrooms. I perhaps Mr. O'Brien could explain to me the theory behind not allowing one bedroom apartments in the zone. It seems as the population uh, gets older, uh, there is uh, an increasing need for one bedroom apartments. Um, I understand the square footage, but the the one bedroom nature I, I didn't quite get. It. Uh, so, uh, again, I'd ask the board to consider why we're here and what we're trying to propose. And uh, I think we've recognized that there is a need that we can fulfill. And that would be the benefit to, to uh, Kenilworth and its residents. Yeah, um, go ahead, Mr. Bryan. I you have to respond more appropriate, Chairman. Okay. Yeah, I was going to, right now, I thought we're in the middle of asking questions of this particular witness, so I'd like to try and focus on that before people are making, you know, dissertations or whatever. So, not you. I was speaking more to the board, Mr. <laughs> I, I'd like to, if we could follow up on two things. When you first look at the application on the surface, just driving by and knowing 21st Street and what's going on, the first thing that pops into, into my head is the concern about parking, because we, we've had a lot of... Um, applications before the board in this general vicinity where parking comes up. So if you could um, dive into the, just just ref, uh, refresh um, the applicant's uh, position as far as parking um, and how that is, I guess uh, you said a lower impact um, as resident, residential versus um, res, residential versus the re, or the commercial there space that's there, and then the other thing on the on the the use the intended use or, or the need that we're trying to fulfill here, um, how how do we, how are we assured that that need is going to be met? Um, we can say we think it's maybe an age uh, you know aging someone that's aging in place is going to be the obvious. Um, uh, potential tenant for, for this place, but how do we know it's not going to go in another direction? Um, you know, I mean, like a young person starting out. Exactly. Is that a need as well as, you know, I know we were, you know, in my head, I, said, I, said, I think that's a great idea for someone that's aging in place, first floor. It's not, doesn't necessarily mean somebody that's young and first starting out. Like, and, and what in our community are we looking for? Uh, just just thoughts flying through my head as I consider the application. I don't get any more thoughts on that. Sure. Um, well, the, uh, the master plan from 2011 has some of the same situations that you have now. But uh, one of the situations that you probably don't have, I didn't get a chance to look at it, maybe again, Mr. O'Brien can uh, inform the board a little better since he's familiar with it a lot. Um, but you probably have uh, over 60 in aging. Uh, you have a, big, uh, a bigger population that is aging than is, you know, elderly, you know, and needs. Uh, I think in 2011, when I was looking at the statistics, statistics from the uh, from the uh, master plan document, that that it was close to uh, 30, 32 percent of, of the population was over 60 or over 62. I would gather that, you know, given you know the medical achievements we have now, whatever those are, that longevity is longer and there are more people living longer. And that's the uh, that's the trend, I guess, for a lot of people. Uh, they want to live longer. Uh, so you have more people looking for these apartments, and you have you know fewer apartments. So uh, I think that's important, and, and you, I, I think there is. Uh, goals established in the, in the 2011 master plan where, where you want to take care of your seniors. You want them to be able to stay in town. You want them, uh, you know, to have close familiarity with their families and, and live near them. So uh, I think that's still important. So uh, as far as, you know, are you going to get, you know, something that is targeted not to what you want instead of hitting A or hitting Z, you know, the other side of the spectrum. You might be, but I don't know if you uh, will be, depending, because they're small apartments. Uh, some people, uh, younger people, will probably sometimes want to uh, share apartments with, so they can share a larger apartment. Uh, that can be done. Uh, but the smaller apartments are, you know, maybe as, as a real estate expert said, are, are very much in, in uh, wanted, uh, you know, for the for the uh, population over 62. 
So, uh, but I mean, your, your question serves an excellent question. The bias and attorney of this gentleman is a planner. Uh, you know, I think about it as just a layman's opinion. Uh, perhaps Mr. Weissman, who testified here, he, he can perhaps be in a better position to address your concern because he deals with the public every day. He knows the type of people that are looking. I think that, yeah, we, we consider the older population, but just as your point illustrates, the other end of the economic spectrum is that a young person who's just starting out and uh, is looking at, at, at being unable to afford uh, leaving home uh, because of the uh, increase in the rentals. And so having uh, this type of an apartment under $2,000 seems to be uh, such a scarcity in our, in our area. Uh, and so maybe we direct ourselves to the older population and hit the young, the young population, uh, but that's still a need that, that needs to be fulfilled. Uh, making one big two-bedroom apartment, it'll just be one more two-bedroom apartment at 2600 and that cuts out both the elderly and the young. Did you want answer on the parking? Yeah. Yeah. If you can just review the parking requirements and, and how well, you think, I think it's the, a less of an impact. The parking is it is what it is. We, I, I believe Mr. Uh, O'Brien said that you required 7.6 spaces. Eight, round up eight. Round up to eight, eight spaces. You get five spaces, there's no way to get any more parking on there. It is what it is. We need to require, you know, if that is the requirement, we can't meet that requirement. We have no more land. No more ability to provide any uh, land or, or any arrangement that we could make other than taking down maybe a portion of the structure to put another parking space, which obviously is not going to happen. So it, it, it stands as is. We cannot provide it, uh, and we need the, re the variance for it, depending upon what that is. Because he is providing one handicap space. Is there a net difference, you know, in your opinion, as far as the residential versus uh, a uh, an occupied uh, uh, office space? Oh yeah, definitely. I would think that you know, again, it, it's predetermined sometimes by the size, uh, commercial use, a very small commercial use in this case would not provide that many. You know, spaces, or if it did, if it had to come to this board for a parking variance, you would say, you know, we're not going to give you a variance. You know, you know, you have too much. The demand for parking is too great there, and we're not going to give you a variance for it. You haven't proved it. Again, we're, you know, we're having what we have because we have a small residential component here. They can't be two bedrooms. We don't have the the room for those. They got to be one bedrooms. You know, so right there. Your demand for parking is down, and, and some people do have one only one car, so they don't have two cars. In this area, you don't need two cars as much as you do in some other areas of New Jersey. So it, it, it is where it is, and we're trying to provide as much parking as we can, and that seems to be what we had, we had before five spaces. Thank you. Question? Mr. Ledeck. Yeah, just on the park, you see, um, I guess with the size of these apartments, you're thinking they would just generate basically one car per unit? Or what is the kind of standard in the state for? Uh, well, it, for it depends. Long, I, there are some elders, I know some friends of mine have three or four cars because they collect cars. They, you know, they have them right. in their garage. I'm kind of talking about the average senior or young Yeah, the average right now, you know, has, has maybe, you know, a number of people probably have one car just to cut down costs on things. Okay. But I think what's going to happen is the person who uh, leases this apartment, assuming we have these two small apartments, is going to know that he's got one space yeah. and that uh, uh, we're going to tell him we can't give him many more than one space. So he's going to have to do his own research to determine if he can live with one space or whether the rules of the community do not allow him to accommodate that second car, in which case he shouldn't and wouldn't rent the apartment. Thank you. Any other board members' questions for? I have one more. Okay. On the affordable component, when is that decision made? Doesn't that have a, you know, here? 
because in terms of financial feasibility and all that, you know, there's a lot of information to process for the applicant. Um, we're going to have to make a decision as to whether it's a two or four unit site plan. Mm -hmm. the rules apply to which. Okay. Any other questions for this witness? Okay, I'm seeing none. Mr. Goodman, what else did you have? Are you just reserved to the community has spoken? Okay. Um, I just have one more question of the owner, if I might. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Bernard, I think you said you bought the property in 2020? Correct. Okay. So you've owned it roughly two to three years. Um, how many improvements have you made to the exterior of the building in the two to three years that you've owned it? Currently, no, I'm just maintaining it. Okay. That's it, thank you. Could I ask yes. the owner a question? You have two tenants upstairs, Correct. residential tenants. How many cars do they have in total? Currently they have two, just one, one each. Okay, if the board ultimately sees fit to approve this, would you accept a condition that each unit, four units, has one space and one space only? Correct. On site? Yes. That they'd be allocated? Yeah. So, as Mr. Goodman said, if someone comes in and has two cars, they got to find some place to put that second car. Correct. Yeah, but I don't know if that's beneficial because you can you can designate that there's one spot, but at the end of the day, a one-bedroom apartment can still be rented by a couple, sure. and a couple is going to have two cars, and they're going to look across the street and see a municipal lot, and they're going to say, "Well, I can park one here and one there." So, I, I don't see restricting, you know, one one you know, space to one apartment is necessarily going to meet the issue, but... Also, you it, can have somebody who comes and rents the apartment that doesn't drive, has no car, so what are you going to do? Leave a space vacant? Because well, I mean, the likelihood of that is slim to none, so... I don't know. A lot of people have to get old and can't drive. And if they violate the borough parking regulations across the street, they have to answer to that. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Cueto, did you have anything that you want to go over before we open it to the public? Sure, Chairman. Um, as I raise the affordable housing issue, I think that um, you should dispose of it. And uh, lean towards our uh, esteemed counsel, Mr. Rego. Uh, I'm inclined to think that this is a two unit site plan application because there are two units that are, that are the basis for this. Have you? I, I agree. The result, if it's approved, the result would be four units. But what's in front of us is just the first floor, whether it stays as is or whether there are two first floor units. So I would opt toward um, your position as far as it being two. Um, that's a crystal ball approach. That, that, that would be my gut. That's what's in front of us, just the first floor. Okay. So we would recommend that to the board then as part of any deliberation. Okay. So therefore, uh, in accordance with the ordinance, they would pay whatever Affordable housing fees are required in accordance with the development that is approved, should be approved. Good. And other comments, Chairman. Uh, I do want to thank the applicant for coming with handouts. <laughs> How often have we asked? I think you're good to get an A plus on that one. Um, I have a number of conditions. Should the board wish to hear that at the appropriate time? Okay. Um, other than that, this is a use variance. Uh, there are a number of variances, as uh, our learned colleague has pointed out. Uh, in addition to that, because of the changes to the well, because they weren't there to start with, and now they've confirmed they're not going to provide them, design waivers will be required for the garbage, parking, landscaping, and buffer. Uh, I, can, I, I can identify them fully for Mr. Rago down the line if, they, if needed, but that would be part of the application for you to see it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Crater, anything? Um, as I said earlier, uh, the, the architect uh, uh, addressed a lot of my comments, actually all of my comments, uh, my letter, and I'll just 
uh, add them as conditions of approval uh, a little later on. Okay. All right. I think at this time I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing to the public for comment. So moved. Mo oh. Motion, do I have a second? second. Okay, mm -hmm. motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay, at this time the hearing is open to the public. If there's anyone out there who would like to make a comment. No, because you have to express all the comments. State your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Robert Herbert, 14 North 12th Street, Calvary. Uh, I can't see the plans from the back there, and I had a hard time hearing. Uh, I guess my question is, what is the side yard setbacks existing condition now? Do we know? You should ask uh, the applicant. These are questions for the applicant, basically. I believe this, it's the same as it is now. But if um, I mean, is the building built the property line, and there's a reason why I'm asking this. Why don't we ask John? John Nicobello. The architect. Andrew. 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 I know we have a little piece of ground on the side of the garbage can. Two fifty. Yes. So the building is not the property line. Um, on the left side, it was. Um, about 30 inches. Um, on the right side, it's escaping me, but it, it, it's probably around the same, maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, I think the exact number is escaping me now. Okay, thank you. The, the reason why I asked that question, uh, and it was brought up in testimony, that there's going to be split units, but the dimensions are still needed, and our ordinance says there's a five foot setback. If you guys decide to approve this tonight and then when they apply for a permit for the AC, but I have to kind of come back to the board for a variance because it's in the side of the setback requirement, the AC units. Uh, you know, I don't think the AC units are indicated on the plan. I don't see any color render of what the finish is going to look like or a previous application could have always had that. Then uh, I think uh, Mr. O'Brien answered my third question. It's going to be a condition of showing the location of the cans because uh, there are residents there. There's newer business owners that put a lot of money in the building. That's not the facade. I don't think they, anybody on commercial or residential come and look at garbage cans in the front door outside the doors. So, and then tonight, some site plan was just submitted tonight. So I don't know. You know, without reviewing all this, you guys can really make a decision to see that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Herbert. Anyone else in the public looking to make comments? Could you state your name and address for the record? I'm Shari Brennan, and I live at 19 North 21st Street. I'm an owner since 2019. Um, I call on all of you to not provide any of this relief, waivers, or variances to Cape Town LLC. I feel that my neighborhood will be negatively impacted. The quality of life of, for us will be impacted by this change from changing from a building that has apartments upstairs and commercial downstairs, which is pretty standard around here, to change it into a, a apartment building. Essentially, that's what it's going to be, right? So it's, you're making a complete change of this transitional area of this neighborhood, as it's been described. So I ask that you do not provide any of these. Um, this is a really crowded area where I live, and I knew that. I think my son is. I have uh, two eight-year-olds, and one of them is on the way. Is supposed to be Does she want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> it's super busy. It's super dense there. I knew that when I moved in, so I deal with it. Um, so this would only add to increasing it. And, I mean, it's been nice that it's been vacant, right? He bought it when it was vacant. It's still vacant. I guess he can tolerate the vacancy until he finds somebody to uh, to come in there. So it's only going to add more um, consistent P 
people in that area. Whereas if it was a dentist office, like they said, the last resident had, um, the last tenant was, that would be in and out more. Um, and they would leave at like five o'clock, right? So they wouldn't be there for the time when all the people come to all the restaurants and start parking up the neighborhood and parking in all the yellow spots and double parking. Uh, I, I think that it would be better for our neighborhood if there was less people there consistently. Because like it's been pointed out, there's a few two-family homes, there's a few duplexes, there's a lot of people. And believe me, every one of those has two to three cars. There's cars all over the place. Um, I feel that the proposed relief is inconsistent with the plan and the neighborhood that's been like this for a very long time. And I don't know what has changed recently that somebody would want to make a change to that. I haven't seen that there's um, some big need to change what's been going on there. Um, so the house that I live in is in one of these pictures here. I'm the, the first one after the duplex. And since I've been there for three years, I've put $25,000 into upgrading and fixing my house, right? Because they're old, they get run down, they need help. The house next door, 23, they have just rehabbed, repainted, replaced things because that just sold. House number 25, they've just redone a whole bunch of the inside of that and they fixed their garage, needed a big roof redone. So people are maintaining their properties there. I mean, they might look old, but there's people that live there for a long time and care about this neighborhood. We're not letting it get run down. Much like this picture on the last page here, they have this uh, building that nobody's maintained for as long as I've lived there in as much as, do they clean the front of it? They took the garbage cans away for this picture. That was nice because usually there's garbage cans out in front of it. I can tell you exactly why it's not getting rented. It's dirty. We want to open a business here. It's not, it's not something that somebody would want to move into unless it was guaranteed that somebody would clean it up. Um, I feel that the the apartment sizes, less than the allowed, are very small. I personally, when I was single, used to live in a 500 square foot apartment. It's very tiny. Um, and what would happen in those apartments is people would move in single, then they get married, then they have a kid, then they have another kid. So that, you know, just because it's a single bedroom doesn't mean that people are not going to start multiplying there. Um, there's a shed on the left hand side. I wonder if that's where the garbage is going to go because right now there's a shed and it's like all unkempt. It's like weeds growing all over the shed. So maybe that's where the garbage will go, but usually the garbage cans are all strewn across the shed. They have um, no parking. There's no sidewalk in that parking lot, right? So the side, the parking lot is old. It's got potholes. People filled it with stones and it's not kept up. Right now, there are those two cars. It's a Jetta and an Accord that park there. And those are small cars. Um, if you were standing there and you looked at the sidewalk this way and this way and extended it in your head, there's only like an inch or two after where these Jetta and Accord park. So if somebody were to come there with a minivan or with a pickup truck or an SUV, they would be on top of the sidewalk that's proposed there. So the, you might get left to right, you might have enough parking spots, but deepness, you're not going to get the, the deepness that you need. And they have these parking blocks there, and then they have these, um, what are they called, ballast or something? These, these cement things. Ballard, solids. Okay, so those are in front of most of the doors. So there's not even like any room for anybody to put like a bench or a chair to sit out in front and enjoy the outside. And um, the lady said that there's only one foot behind the house, and there's like minuscule area left to right, especially the right, which is owned by somebody else, that driveway is used. There's cars going in and out of there. So you can't sit there. So I think that people end up sitting like right in front of their door with these poles in their face. Um, the, the location of this parking lot is right next to the liquor store where there's people that uh, double park right there to unload boxes of liquor or whatever. Every day, almost, it seems they're there. Then, there, if that um, box truck's not there unloading, then there's people who are buying from that liquor store, double parking there, they park on the sidewalk right there. Then there's the traffic light. Then, if you come on this side, where Ava's is, that's also yellow, and they have um, 
They have double parking there for people who are picking up Uber Eats. They have double parking there for people who are delivering to Ava's. There's, um, there's also um, people pulling up there delivering alcohol to Ava's, so it's food and alcohol on that side. Then there's the municipal lot, which is in and out right there. There's cars going in and out of there. And with the traffic light, and all these cars parked in all these illegal places, everything backs up all day. Especially um, you know, when people are trying to get through town, like during traffic hour, going in, going out. So you can't even use both lanes. There's supposed to be one lane for going left and one lane for going straight and right. But there's cars all over the place and trucks all over the place. So it backs up and backs up and backs up. These people would have to, how would they go in and out of their driveway if you added more cars in there? They're going to be backing up into all this stuff. Um, so the apartment building that I see that somebody allowed on North 20th Street is a bad example of what I don't want my neighborhood to turn into. Has anybody gone down North 20th? The last house on the left, number 52, is something that was commercial has become an apartment building. There's people hanging out on that front stoop all the time when I come down there. They're out there in their pajamas, they didn't, shave, they didn't comb their hair. They're smoking cigarettes. It's like, it's scary. When we walk there, we walk on the other side of the road. And I'm sure it's next to the firehouse. I'm sure everybody knows about what goes on in there. It's a scary thing. So I'm afraid that turning this into an apartment building, especially with cheap rent, you're going to bring in these kind of people. I have these two children while the other one's outside. But I don't want more of this kind of thing. Like, I moved in, into Kenilworth thinking that, you know, what kind of a town it was. It hasn't quite turned out. Um, the same street, North 21st Street, coming up to the light, you know, everybody comes in off of Route 22, they cut through, and then they come up North 21st Street to cross into Cranford. So all these people that we're trying to attract to our town and to our business are going to see all this garbage going on all the time. So I, just, I feel like it's, um, it's introducing something that doesn't exist, and I don't know why. I feel that if he cleaned up this, this uh, building, this picture, that he could rent it out and do what he was supposed to be doing with it. I, the, um, I just feel like it's going to change the neighborhood, and not for the better. There's a lot of good people in that neighborhood, and I, you know, the, um, the building Ava's, which he also is um, you know, either the owner or the occupant of, that's all, always dirty, too. I feel like if he builds this apartment, he's just going to put it together and like just leave it because they see that that's what he did with Davis. I don't understand why anybody sits out there and eats. The, um, the sidewalk is dirty with food, with dropped drinks, with cigarette butts, and it, it never gets cleaned. They have um, they need a weed whacker out there half the summer. I don't know why he eats there. But I would just ask that you don't approve this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wants to make comment on this application? Seeing no one, I will entertain a motion to close the public portion of the hearing. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed. And Mr. Goodman, you're on. Yeah, just in, uh, in conclusion, um, I still believe, and my clients still believe, that we're fulfilling the need with the two one bedroom apartments just because people can't afford a lot of money doesn't make them bad people. There are a lot of young people, there are a lot of older people who are good candidates for these uh, small one bedroom apartments on the, uh, on the first floor. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, commercial space is simply uh, not highly desirable at this time. Uh, the, the boulevard is a very dynamic part of New County, especially here in Kenilworth. But as you ride down, and you can't even access the street because it's a one-way street. Uh, so you have to go around the block. That is a serious detriment to marketing for anybody who wants the visibility uh, off of the boulevard. Um, the applicant has testified that he has tried with two particular brokers uh, to uh, rent this space commercially and uh, without success. 
Now he wants uh, to uh, fix up his building. Uh, but uh, I know economics is not part of your deliberation, but it's part of the real world. And he does uh, need the revenue uh, uh, in order to uh, generate the type of money that can uh, help him make this building more attractive and be more of an uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, property in this neighborhood, which I think will benefit the neighborhood. Uh, this is a, a rather small uh, change. We're talking about two residential apartments versus a commercial uh, office space uh, or, or retail service space. And um, uh, I think if you weigh the equities, uh, I believe that uh, there are more pluses here than minuses. Our property is, it, we can't really do too much. Uh, it's a fully built site. It's an undersized property. Uh, and I think the applicant with his uh, architect and the various professionals, uh, I think they've made a, a, a compelling case for allowing uh, the change to two small one-bedroom apartments on the first floor. Thank you. Thank you, Skid. Okay. For members, professionals, anything else to remind you? Mr. Daly, I have a Oh. So, oh, with the number of, they were just talking about the economics of commercial low sites going out of business. So if we approve this, what happens to, you said, President for every other store to boulevard that's empty or becomes empty to become an apartment? Or is this a separate? It's separate. We, 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 we deal with applications one at a time. That's standard. Every application has a unique set of circumstances. And this one, for instance, is not on the boulevard. I kind of understand that. Right. And for instance, does that parking unlike most on the boulevard. So every application rises and falls on its own unique characteristics. Thank you. Okay, Mr. O'Brien, do you have something you wanted to go over before we start deliberating? Uh, I have some conditions should the board wish to consider at this time. Okay. I think maybe we need to determine which way the board is going to go before we worry about conditions. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, board members, you know, what's your, I mean, is there someone who um, at this point in time wants to uh, put forth a motion either to approve or deny the application or do you want to discuss things first? Take your directive. I wouldn't mind hearing from anyone else on the board. Okay. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck in between. I I I, I agree. That the 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 net difference seems to be so um, so minor because the building is just smashed in there. But it's there, and it's a practical reality for our township that we have to deal with it. And then what's going to be better? I'd love to see this thing cleaned up, fixed up, um, how are we going to get to that point? Um, so, and, and uh, you know, the parking, uh, the explanation as far as the parking, you know, what are we talking about, a space plus or minus in either direction? I don't see how either um, use is going to make that much of a difference. The question is, you know, looking at it, I feel that it should be, um, office space on the first floor as intended. It just seems right to me. But empty office space isn't, isn't good. You know, you drive, even uh, even uh, the upper scale towns, when you drive through Westfield, especially nowadays, and you see these, all these empty storefronts, it's just, and, and the reason for it is a reality too. So um, that's why I'd like to get somebody to help me convince me. <laughs> Mr. Scudero. I think the resident brought up a good point. I think I'm kind of stuck between it also. I think if this building had been cleaned up in the past two years, uh, if it wasn't such in such disrepair and he was not able to rent it, it would be, I'd be a lot more sympathetic with it. Um, because we don't know whether it's just not able to be rented because nobody wants to rent office space or everybody is going by and saying, I don't want to rent that office space. Um, you really can't compare us to first floor places in Westfield or rents properly half the price. Um, and in the past, we have we have denied applications because somebody wanted to build a building that was too big for the lot uh, for financial 
increase in their profit for whatever the reason was. We kind of denied it because they could shrink the building down to three or four feet and not need some variances. We built one apartment on the first floor. We're not talking about, we're eliminating the variance. So those are a couple of things that got me, have me back and forth. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, for, since I don't see anyone else, then I'll make my comment. I kind of feel um, the same as Mr. Scuderi in looking, and the resident hit on it themselves. If I were to look at this picture, there's no way. So say that I'm a, a CPA just looking for a small office to, to conduct my business out of, and I drove by that. Why would I ever want to rent that? I mean, again, he testified that he... Um, has owned it for two to three years and hasn't made a single improvement in the property in that time. So, again, I feel pretty strongly there hasn't been ample evidence provided that this is unrentable as commercial space. And it's not a storefront, so I don't think people should look at it as, you know, it's, it's not renting, nobody's going to put in a store because stores aren't working these days. This was the doctor's office, the dentist's office, previously and it was rentable but now when you take a look at the building and the condition of it again why would someone rent it so um yeah and uh, the parking kind of goes without saying we're going down one spot right so there's five now it's going to provide one handicap so it's going down to four and i'm not sure what happens but what if a handicapped person doesn't rent one of the apartments then that space goes unoccupied and there's only three spaces available so unless someone can park in the handicapped space i don't know if that's uh, um, allowed so anyway those are my points on the application yeah. so just so just the two successful commercial enterprises in their two offices would probably generate a lot more traffic right People are probably going to work during the day. If you have two people with businesses open from 8 o'clock until 5 o'clock in the afternoon and they're successful, people are coming in and out, whether it's a dentist or whatever business is. I mean, and playing devil's advocate, I mean, that's something you know, on the other side of the point that you have to think about. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that. But again, if you take my example of maybe a CPA who doesn't have clients coming in all day long, maybe they don't even have clients that come in. They're just conducting their business out of an office space that they don't want to do in their own home. So then there's no traffic. And those businesses tend to close up at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or whatever and leave. And then there's no fight for parking overnight, which is which is a big issue in that area. So again, those are my points. And the, yeah. the other thing is our, our municipal lot is meant to provide parking for our businesses during the day. Right. So they would be for, you know, offered that opportunity to use that lot for business, mm -hmm. not for residential. Okay. Can I comment on that municipal? No, I'm sorry. The public yeah. portion of the hearing's over. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't park overnight in that lot. Um, I, I forget. Right? I forget no if there's park permits park allowed. Park no park. Park. Okay. All right. Any any other comments that somebody wants to make before someone willing to make a motion, one way or the other, to either approve or deny the application? No one. <laughs> Someone's got it. I'll make a motion to deny the application. Okay. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. A yes is to deny. A yes is to deny. Okay. Mr. Damon? Yes. Mr. Clinty? Yes. Mr. Cantina? Yes. Mr. Mazio? Yes. Mr. Ladowdy? Yes. Mr. Scuderi? Yes. Mr. Herbalaria? No. Okay. The application's denied, so I guess we won't need Kevin's. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there's six to one. All right. Thank you, everyone, those of you who came out.
Yeah, but you're going to have those units, though. Okay. Yeah. So split. AC split. Yeah, well, that's yours. No, that's not. That's the same. Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right, so that takes us to um, comments for the good of the board. Does anyone have any comments for the good of the board they'd like to make? Okay, seeing none. Now at this time, we will open the meeting to the public for general comments. Would someone like to make a motion to go into uh, open session? Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Okay, the meeting is open to the public. If there's anyone who would like to come up and make a general comment at this time, state your name and address for the record. That's more of a uh, council okay. issue, so Mr. Well, I Moore. Can I come Mr. Moore? On that? Uh, although that is excellent, half everyone that's on the dais has to come down in order to use it right. because you're blocking the screen. Which we, we block, you're blocking the screen when you're up there, so we actually have have to move when we we have used it occasionally. And we've had to come down here. It's just an, unfortunately in a bad spot. It's nice to have, but it's in a bad spot. Unfortunately, yeah. Thank you. Small room. Yeah, I guess. Thank you. We're going to up with big commercial clients, but the homeowner that's coming in for. Well, I mean, there's got to be a solution to get something in this room that we could use. I think it would be nice to have. Uh, another camera so that when Marco is taping, he's taping not from the person behind. Well, as you're speaking, there could be another camera that's picking you up, speaking your face. Okay. You know, there's a lot of technology. Just so we can here. see what's being proposed. You know, like I understand. We, we, you know, but it's been this way for years. Right. But if we can right. create something to make it a little more steps, friendlier, yeah. that would be great. And then, again, I don't know if this is a council question or a board question, but our redevelopment unit, uh, affordable housing, that was approved. Uh, I drive by there almost every day uh, to avoid the light on Michigan Avenue. I got through there. And the applicant that got approval uh, still renting out to multiple trucks, tractor trailers. They're dragging oil all over the place up and down the Federal Avenue there. Uh, does anybody know, is this project on schedule to get started? And my concern is, we gave them a pilot program, which I understand completely the benefits of a pilot program, you know, the municipality, it benefits them financially. But I don't think it's fair to business owners and residents uh, that they have to pay their full taxes, and here somebody else got an approval, uh, and he's on some kind of discount pilot program, and he's, he's collecting rent. So does anybody know? Yeah, so Mr. Herbert, sorry to, to jump in, but the board approved the application, so it's out of our hands, so really your, We're not involved your questions process. need to go to the Mary Council. Okay, that's all I need to know. I, 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 I didn't mean, know who was the proper place here I mean, or not. I can't yeah. probably. Well, I, I mean, Mary. Uh, I was just concerned. Yeah. Well, to the deference. <laughs> well, I would need to send them to you. I'm here anyway, though. I can I can give a All right, Mr. Kratos. Uh, Mr. Kratos, can you give a quick uh, It's under resolution compliance right now. They're addressing comments based on the resolution. Uh, so they were approved, but they haven't satisfied the requirements. Yes. Any deadline on the one that's going to be? 
Well, it's like I said, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's in my office right now being reviewed. Anyone else from the public? All right, entertain a motion to close the public portion. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Second? Okay, motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Public portion meeting is closed, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Right, a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Sure.